Four-color theorem was known for about a century as the four-color problem. Uh, it was coined by a uh, Cambridge University student who in his spare time tried to color a map of the county of England and realized he needed just four different colors in order to map, color the map so that adjoining co uh, counties had different colors. So he actually left the problem with uh, a uh, Professor de Morgan uh, who was then professor in Cambridge. De Morgan kept it in a drawer for 25 years to embarrass all his visitors. And then his, his successor, Cayley, published it uh, uh, in the uh, Royal Academy uh, proceedings. And a year later, the problem was solved by uh, Alfred Kemper, who was subsequently knighted. Uh, so it was sort of a case closed for a uh, slightly uh, uh, embarrassing problem in that it was sort of obvious you could do it, but there was no uh, obvious proof, apparently. So all was well, there was even a second independent proof one year later. Uh, but then 11 years later, disaster struck, it turned out there was an error in the proof. So the proof relied on doing a little calculation about how you can color ma a map around a region that has, that's a pentagon, so that has uh, five neighbors, and somehow there was a bug in the calculation, even though this is a very small case, uh, and, and the bug couldn't, couldn't be fixed. And then the problem fell in limbo for uh, the better part of the following century, um, and it was only sol finally solved in 1976 using a computer. And the reason you needed to use a computer was that the argument had to graduate from just pentagons to larger fragments of the map. So roughly, the argument is still, was still the original ar failed argument by Kempe, which is you figure out an area of the map that's easy to color, uh, modify the map slightly in that, uh, in, in that area, then uh, invoke induction, and then since the, that area was easy to color, you fix the, uh, the coloring. Now for a pentagon, you only have to look at three different colorings to, uh, to fix things. But Kempe somehow managed to get one wrong. And the whole Royal Academy got, uh, got it wrong as well, so uh, he's not too, too much to blame. But there are map, maps that have this property. For example, the one that has... Uh, so, uh, so this one has this... Uh, coloring by induction property, uh, but it takes, uh, we have to look over a few hundred cases to, uh, to solve this. Uh, and in order to actually prove the problem, you need to look at, uh, I'm sorry, you need to look at 20 million cases. And uh, in fact, you, you need more than one map, you need about 1,500 of them. Uh, so a computer was required. Uh, that made a big splash because this was the first time that there was a uh, well-known mathematical problem with a very simple statement that's understandable even by a five-year-old uh, that required a computer for a solution. And there was some debate as to whether this is a real proof or not. Now, uh, 20 years later, in 95, there was a crack team of combinatorists that revisited the problem, wrote better code for proving the, uh, uh, the theorem, simplified the proof uh, in many ways. For example, they only needed about 600 uh, of these uh, special configurations uh, to, uh, to carry out the proof. But the proof still had the, uh, the shape of uh, we do a relatively standard graph theoretic argument to reduce the problem to these uh, cases, and uh, then we uh, run bespoke computer code that will check the cases for, uh, for us. In fact, there are two checks that are involved. One has to check that the 600 uh, maps that were set aside actually suffice to cover all possible uh, planar maps, and uh, independently that each of the configurations uh, allows coloring by induction. The case was sort of closed after this revision because the code was much nicer. Uh, but for a computer li a scientist like me, the case wasn't quite closed because, from my perspective, it's perfectly admissible to 
uh, give a computer program as evidence, uh, even as proof, as long as one proves that the computer program actually does what it's uh, claimed to do. And it's known that humans are very poor at checking what computer programs do. And uh, I was familiar with the techniques used to prove that computer programs uh, do uh, what's expected of them. And I figured I'd turn them on to uh, try to finish a complete proof. Then I realized that, of course, the description of what the co computer code is supposed to do itself is fairly complicated. It's some technical condition about uh, how you can move from one coloring to another. And so uh, I just, uh, by doing the work for the uh, computer program, I just move the problem from the program to its technical specification. So it still wasn't quite a proof of the, uh, the four-color theorem. And so I carried on and computer checked argument of the entire mathematical stack. And in doing so, I discovered little tidbits of uh, uh, graph theory that had been sort of ignored or forgotten. And that actually made yeah. it tackle all of the details of the, uh, of the mathematical proof uh, that would have uh, uh, were in the initial proofs were kind of shoved under the uh, the carpet notoriously at one key lemma that was proved by uh, invoking the mathematical folklore. So we can now consider that the proof of the theorem is completely proved because there is a uh, physical object that describes the entire argument, every detail of it, and uh, such level of detail that the uh, consistency of the description can be checked mechanically. So that description includes both code that you execute, an argument that the code is correct, and then an argument that uh, the basis of that argument is also correct, is sufficient for proving the theorem. So the four-color theorem per se has relatively few applications. It had some use in uh, Seymour's Miner's th theorem, which is why he uh, and his team embarked on a second proof of the theorem. Uh, but the uh, fact that one could do a, computer, a full computer proof of the entire argument has probably more implication. And in some sense, the theorem is more important not for its mathematical contents, but in the fact that it open mathematics to new uh, avenues of proof. First in uh, the 70s by showing that there was some point in doing large calculations to show theorems that have very short statements. And, uh, and then with my work with the evidence that uh, there was a, some point in carrying out a fully formal argument uh, when one wasn't quite sure whether there wasn't one fishy little detail that could derail uh, the correctness of the entire thing. And following that uh, piece of work, I embarked on a uh, slightly more central uh, piece of mathematics, the uh, Fight thompson all order theorem, which is one of the uh, cornerstones of the classification of finite simple groups. And this is a proof that also had a bit of a checkered history in that it was very long and technical and took a while to be uh, accepted by uh, all mathematicians. Uh, and I wanted to see whether uh, the uh, techniques I developed for the four-color theorem could be extended to handle uh, real uh, research level mathematics. And that project uh, concluded successfully uh, on time, which is unusual for a software experimental project.